Coming up on Cowboy Special Edition, rookie Xavier Woods discusses his play in his first four games and how he's adjusting to becoming an NFL safety. Defensive end Demontre Moore talks about coming back to Texas to play for his hometown team. We'll look ahead to a rematch with the Green Bay Packers, who eliminated the Cowboys from the playoffs just nine months ago. And we'll take you inside the Ford Center as players assemble for their annual team photo. All that and more coming up on Cowboy Special Edition, brought to you by AT&T. Got to get a first down or the game's over. Oh, short to Elliott, 45, broke a tackle, 40-yard line. He's tackled short of the first down. And the Rams are going to get out of here with a win. For the first time since the season opener last September against New York, the Cowboys lost at home. Our, our inability to sustain drives, their ability to stay on the field uh, on their drives, um, you know, to me, that was the difference in the game. We beat ourselves today, man. They didn't beat us. The Cowboys beat the Cowboys. The Cowboys' second loss of the season came a lot earlier than last year when Dallas didn't lose their second game of the season until December the 11th. Well, they've got talent. And uh, it's very disappointing. It's very disappointing. We uh, uh, thought we were in good hands there, but uh, that's that's what happens with the NFL. You you let talent uh, get going, get motivated, and they did. And uh, so I, I really have got to say that I thought they adjusted well at that time. Really thought they came back, and uh, everybody um, uh, for them. Uh, uh, gave us more than we can have. Team owner Jerry Jones credited Rams defensive coordinator Wade Phillips for making second half adjustments, while quarterback Dak Prescott had a different view. Uh, yeah, I don't think they did anything differently. Uh, they stuck to their game plan. First, uh, second half was the same thing. I think it just wasn't, it was just us not converting. Uh, we've got to find uh, better consistency in our offense and, and running the ball and throwing the ball. Me, uh, me and my accuracy, I mean, it's just got to gotta be consistent throughout the whole game. Prescott, who passed for 155 yards in the first half, completed just nine passes in the second half for 65 yards. But the final totals still had Dallas with more rushing and more passing yardage than their opponent. I think that goes back to it being a 60-minute game. You know, early on we started off fast and, you know, we had spurts. But uh, I think it's about being a consistent pro and at times, uh, we had a couple letdowns, so I mean, I'm appreciative of those numbers, but let's try to get it going throughout the whole game. Two turnovers were key. First, there was Ryan Switzer's muff putt in the second quarter. Switzer's under it, and he will catch it and fumble it. And around the 20, a flag is in, and we'll wait and see who's recover it at the Dallas 18. Uh, obviously, that was a big play. You know, when those things happen, it becomes a 50, 60 yard play. and. Uh, it was able. Uh, it gave them an opportunity to change field position and get down in there for a nice scoring opportunity. You know, I thought our defense did a good job at different times throughout the game handling that sudden change. You know, but it's not a situation you want to put your defense in very much. You want to make that opposing offense drive the field and earn it. And, and in that particular case, we didn't do that. The Rams also got a tipped interception in the fourth. Two turnovers that produced 10 points, more than enough to make the difference in the ball game. We just gotta gotta finish. We just gotta finish. Simple and plain. You know, no excuses, no explanations. We just gotta finish. Finish better than offense. We're not gonna lose confidence. This offense, this team, uh, we're not gonna do that, and that's for sure. Uh, two and two, a lot of football left. Um, we, we feel like we're getting better. I mean, even even in a loss, we're gonna find a way and, and use it to get better. Uh, and moving forward, we've got a good team coming here next week. Uh, so it's not a lot of not a lot of time to to lack on this one and, and sit around and figure out what we had to do. We just gotta get better and get ready for uh, next week. Meanwhile, the Rams would score on nine of their 11 possessions. Missing on defense for Dallas was linebacker Sean Lee, who was out with a hamstring injury. I mean, that's our, that's our captain, you know, that's our captain of the defense. And, you know, he keep everything intact, so I mean, glad, we'll be glad to have him back next week if he's ready. If not, we're going to keep moving with what, what we got. Yeah, everybody contributed in the loss. And, uh, you know, you win as a team, you lose as a team. and. Uh, you can look to each uh, phase of our football team and find a lot of positives from that game yesterday. And similarly, you can find some things that contributed to the outcome of the game. And uh, you know, one of the things we have to do with our players when they come in is unemotionally evaluate the game and, and, and look at the good stuff and try to build on that and certainly try to address and correct the stuff that, uh, that wasn't good. Special Edition, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The Salvation Army, doing the most good. 
and by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. Back to throw, looking over the middle, throwing a crosser, incomplete. Really good job, Xavier Woods. Somebody buy a 25 jersey. This kid is gonna, he is really coming. Four games into the season, and Cowboys rookie Xavier Woods continues to pick up valuable experience. Woods has appeared in all four games in the season so far. I've been preparing my whole life for this. Uh, I've been, been to practice with practice with training camp OTAs, uh, just being ready for this opportunity that uh, I have I have in front of me. Woods, a safety, was drafted in the sixth round after playing at Louisiana Tech, where he finished with 14 career interceptions. He's part of the rookie class that the Cowboys assembled during the offseason following major changes in their defensive backfield. As a result, the expectations for guys like Woods are high. Oh, it just makes you just want to succeed and just learn everything faster, just get the playbook down faster, uh, compete even harder, compete against you know, your teammates even, even harder uh, to get that spider or just to take advantage of the opportunity. Like other rookie draft picks, Woods was thrown into the fire to gain experience in a hurry. So far, he's participated in 106 plays. His adjustments from college to the pros is underway, a process he says is not really all that foreign to him. To be honest, it's a lot less than you think. It's a lot less. The main main thing is learning to take, learning the terminology, learning the, it's way more, um, I'll say all you have to make, way more coverages you have to know. Um, but aside from that, just the speed of the game, the speed of the game is not really, not really that different. Uh, I mean, guys just make tough catches, way more tough catches. The, the windows are smaller, but aside from that, it's just the um, X's and O's. He's a baller. You know, all of us, we some young dogs. You know, we had that baller mentality. No matter where we at on the field, we're going to make plays. And as you can see, you know, Jordan's played nickel, Jordan's played corner, X played safety, X has played nickel. You know, I've played Dom, I've played corner, some safety. So, you know, it's just going to keep going like that. You know, no matter where we line up, we're going to try to make plays. Already defensive coordinator Rod Marinelli has developed enough confidence in Woods to use him in key nickel situations. It's a compliment of sorts from a man who's been in the league for a long, long time. I think when he, he plays good, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying, he comes in, he's done some good, very similar to Lewis a little bit, that, that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Guy made a great tackle out in the open space, and he's got the nice feel, so, you know, when those guys earn that stuff, you just keep working with them, and uh, these guys are very conscientious guys, so they're going to go out and work at it each and every day. He's doing a tremendous job um, as coming in there and not playing like a first-year guy. It's a lot of us, it's our first year playing, and uh, you know we're expected to play at a high level, and uh, we're doing that for the most part. Woods also leans heavily on Cowboy Safety's coach, Greg Jackson, to help him understand and learn more about the game. It's, it's easy, it's easy to sit in the meeting room and just soak the knowledge that he gives you, being that he played this game, uh, and then the bounce off deals off of him, knowing that he's been through this, he's done this before, and uh, he sees what we see as players. Woods never missed a game in college. In four years, he played in 53 games, starting all but two. He's itching to get his first interception as a pro. Man, real, real bad. Uh, it's just all about not pressing. Uh, just the picks just kind of come to you, just kind of the picks come to you, the interceptions that come to you. Uh, when you're forcing, you never get any. I learned it the hard way. With Xavier as his first name, Woods has grown accustomed to being called the X-Man. Now that's certainly a conflict with Des Bryant, who likes to throw up the X during his touchdown celebrations. I think I was doing that before he got, before he got in the league. I was doing that in a little late. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. This segment is brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Cowboys defensive end Amontre Moore is in his fifth year in the NFL, but this is the first time he's been close to home. Moore is a graduate of Rowlett High School, a 30-minute drive southeast of the Cowboys practice facility in Frisco, but that's only part of his connection to North Texas. It's pretty cool. Um, I actually grew up in Oak Cliff, and so um, the inner cities of Dallas, and 
I transferred to Raleigh, so I've been all around. And so for me, it's like uh, pretty much the whole city is my old stomping ground. So I, I love it. Moore signed a two-year contract and had to sit out the first two games this season, serving a suspension. Still, his first game at AT&T Stadium against the Rams last week is one he will not soon forget. And the, the first few games have been magical. Um, you know, this everything, everything. I can't even I can't even explain from playing that away game to my first time stepping on that home field uh, this past weekend. Um, I can't even describe it. It was just that one moment that you look forward to when you're in Little League football and you're like, hey, I'm going to play for my hometown team. Before Dallas, Moore made stops in New York, Miami, Oakland, and Seattle. So the road back to Texas made a lot of turns. <laughs> I learned a lot. Uh, this is actually my fifth team, uh, my fifth team in five years. And so um, for me, I'm, I've had so many uh, learning lessons. I would say probably the biggest one that I can take from Everything um, is, you know, going out there and just having fun, enjoying your job, enjoying what you love to do, but then also, you know, realize that this is a job and the closer you are, as long as you're working hard, everything else will take care of itself. Moore's fiery attitude may have gotten him in trouble during his early years. Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett says that he likes that in a player. I feel like, uh, if anything, I gotta contain it because that is part of me, just um, growing up in the area that I grew up in. And, um, I've always played with a chip on my shoulder. Um, I'm one of the youngest guys. Um, I just turned 25 in September, so I used to always hang around older like, people and stuff like that. And I was skinny, so people used to like kind of pick on me. So I felt like I used to have to prove myself a lot. So for me, um, I just I, I try to transfer that over to my game. Football was my outlet when I was younger. They were like, hey, you know, since you're so aggressive and you have this chip, won't you start playing football? And that was the one sport that you can go out there and be aggressive as you want to and state your like dominance over somebody. And for me, I always wanted to be dominant. In the two games with the Cowboys so far, Moore has been on the field for 47 plays. He's picked up six tackles along the way. Now he's doing a good job. You know, he's had limited opportunities as a rusher, but he's shown up a little bit. He's around the quarterback. He's made some tackles, and uh, he's getting better and better on special teams. He was around that punt uh, in the game the other day, so uh, he's certainly a guy who can show up in a couple of those phases. Moore was a linebacker at Texas A&M, but it wasn't long before he found a home on the defensive line. Um, the transitions wasn't that it wasn't it wasn't that big of a jump for me because when I got to the Giants, I played uh, I played. Uh, I played defensive end there, and then uh, with Oakland, I went in and started playing outside linebacker again. So for me, I, I felt like I was really well diverse, and it just kind of made it a smoother transition for me. Because he's playing on his home turf, ticket requests can get out of hand. So to deal with all that, Moore has found a solution. I, I tell everybody, you know, if this was like my first, second year, I probably wouldn't have been able to handle it. But with it going into my fifth year, um, I also, I get that excitement, but I realize that this is a job at the end of the day, and I'm not going to let anybody affect me. So when they come ask me for tickets, I'd be like, uh, no. And then if people start hounding me too much, I send them right to my mom and my fiance, and they have no problem with telling them, no, we're not doing this and doing that. So it works out for me pretty well. This segment was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. This segment is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And Rogers back and peels out left and stands and looks and rolls. It's a play that has haunted the Cowboys for the last nine months. And runs and throws it down the field, and it's caught at the 34-yard line by Jared Cook with three seconds left. That's the day the Packers converted a third and 20 to set up a game-winning field goal to eliminate Dallas from the playoffs. The fact that uh, Lane Taylor you know, did his job so well and, and gave me an extra time, Devontae running on a bad ankle, clearing things out, and then Jared somehow getting his, his toes in. A lot went in that play. And, and, one you're going to look back on for a long time and feel good about. Sunday, the two teams will meet again. Yeah, we've certainly played them a lot, and, and, and we know them. Uh, I'm sure they know us. Uh, I do think what happens in the NFL is there's turnover with personnel, and, and there's evolution and scheme in all three phases of your team. So you got to be careful about saying, we know these guys. You have to go back and see who they are right now, who's playing for them, and what they're doing with those guys. We've tried to do that, uh, but there's no question we each have a background with each other. We've had a lot of history just recently, too. I think we've played them out of my 10 years. I feel like we played them nine times or so, eight times. And so there's been some big games, um, big games, incredible finishes. Um, and so hopefully there's another one. It's definitely 
in our head. I mean, they knocked us out of the playoffs last year. Uh, so, I mean, we were going back. I wouldn't necessarily say for revenge, but I mean, to go get a win, uh, to, to go show them what we're capable of doing. Uh, so we're excited for it and uh, it's a good matchup. I mean, we played them three times in a year. I mean, them and the Giants are the only ones I've done that with so far. So. The Cowboys would prefer to remember the game one year ago when Dallas beat Green Bay for the first time since 2008. Little has changed for the Packers. Their leader, quarterback Aaron Rodgers, has amassed 139 career starts and is now in his 13th season. Oh man, a, a legend, um, you know, a Hall of Famer, a guy that I've always wanted to play against. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, beyond that, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to playing with my teammates and, and going out there to, to get a win. Like the Rams last week, Green Bay is also coming off a Thursday night game and will play Dallas on a well-rested 10th day. Packers head coach Mike McCarthy says it's been like a week off as they return to AT&T Stadium, a place where they won Super Bowl 45 in 2011. It's nice to talk about it. It's a, it's a great facility. I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful place to play. And, but at the end of the day, we, 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 you know, we're fighting to get the four wins. The Packers come to Texas with a 3-1 and one record with wins over Seattle, Cincinnati, and Chicago. Wide receiver Jordy Nelson leads the league in touchdown receptions and prepares to face a very young Dallas secondary. I see a lot of the similarities. They got a few different paces, but uh, overall their defensive scheme is pretty much the same. They want to get out after you up front uh, with, with four down linemen and uh, you know play soft in the back end to keep everything in front of them. Uh, so it's going to be important for us to break tackles and continue to pick up uh, first downs. Meanwhile, AT&T Stadium does provide a certain degree of nostalgia for players like Rodgers. But for everyone else, not so much. We were actually talking to Dan Huddle, Jordy and I brought up kind of a inside joke that we had from that year. We looked around and said, it's just you and me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this segment was brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. How you doing? Nice to see you. What's going on? I'm all right. How are you? Take charge of these guys now. Thank you. Hey, bro, come on, bro. Hey, Dez, come on, bro. Man, get Dez. Come on, Doc. Come on, yeah, Bryce. Yeah, yeah, where are you at? Yeah, there you go. Close. Hey, Bryce. Yeah. Quick question. <laughs> Three. Three. You ready? One, two, three. What are you doing? What are you doing? Three. One, two, three. Hey! Hey! Crawford! Y'all there will have to step down. Y'all gotta stand up. Y'all gotta step down. I know. Technology's changed so much. You know, it's more involved, but it's easier now. With technology, you can do so much more forgiving. In the old days, it was four by five view camera, and you got what you got. Well, we used to take them at Texas Stadium, and we would use the big board that was in the end zone, and we would put uh, the year up there, Cowboys in the year. So we'd have to expose for the players, but exposed for the board also. And we were, we were shooting like almost wide open at a 60th of a second. You could never get everybody to stand still, be still. It was, it was very hard back then. You're on the outer edge. I need these, I need all these people, one, two, three, four, to be in a straight line. <laughs> one, two, three. Special edition, presented by AT&T, was brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss another game. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass.
If you missed any portion of the show, be sure to visit DallasCowboys.com forward slash TV.